In a way, I'm probably immortal. This is one of the thousands of quotes attributed to the Dutch and Catalan legend, the unique Johan Cruyff. Genius, artist, orchestrator. If you've heard the tales but never watched Johan Cruyff play, you have to watch this. Hendrik Johannes Cruyff was born in April of 1947 in Amsterdam, more specifically, five minutes away from Ajax's stadium, a place that would become his home, even more so when his mother took a cleaning job at Ajax to make ends meet after the sudden death of Johann's father. Young Cruyff would spend every free minute of his childhood running around Ajax's stadium. The importance of his birthplace and time is the context that would result in one of the most impressive and lauded football developments in history, one in which Johan would become Cruyff. We're talking about total football. And when you talk total football, you talk Rhinus Michaels. It's not just possible to tell the tale of Cruyff, the footballer, without Michaels, the coach. The Dutch have a saying, God created the world, but the Dutch created the Netherlands as they claimed the land their nation is built upon from the sea. Michael's football philosophy drew from the Dutch economics of space. Although the size of the football field is fixed, the playing area can be altered to suit a team's needs. For Ajax, who signed Michaels as their manager in 1964, it was all about space. Moving the ball fast, interchanging positions, making runs to stretch openings. Defenders would attack, attackers would defend. In this organized freedom, one player rose as the creative outlet, Johan Cruyff. He was spotted on a playground at the age of 10 and asked to join Ajax's youth setup. His official debut came in 1964 by the hand of Michaels. It was a 3-1 defeat and he scored the goal. Ajax were threatened by relegation. Instead, they began a revolution. And Cruyff was the liberator. His technical skills and the velocity at which he executed them were never seen before. He could execute every pass. His ball control was marvelous, and his dribbling was unstoppable, even inventing his trademark skill, the Cruyff turn. Cruyff had control of the ball in an attacking position, but was facing his own goal and being guarded tightly by a defender. So Cruyff feigned a pass before dragging the ball behind his standing leg turning 180 degrees and accelerating away. The defender was done for, Boateng vibes all over him. On top of this, Cruyff could score every kind of goal, be it long range, first touch, powerful or placed shots or dribbling goalies. Testament to this are his over 400 career goals. But the Dutchman's main qualities as a footballer were both his creativity and his intelligence. Cruyff's game was as much the result of his innate talent for playing football as his constant search to understand the game in an almost scientific manner, always aiming for efficiency. That's why total football was his natural habitat, and the style of play was enabled by the existence of Cruyff. The basis of it is that the shape is maintained by pure fluidity. If a player goes out of their position, another player fills that gap to keep the shape while drawing rivals out of position with your offensive runs. Cruyff, originally a forward, dropped out of position to drag out opponents and to get the ball directly from the goalkeeper. He served as the conductor. Ajax defender Barry Holshoff explained it best. We discussed space the whole time. Cruyff always talked about where people should run, where they should stand, where they should not be moving. It was all about making space and coming into space. Where is the most space? Where is the player who has the most time? That is where we have to play the ball. Every player had to understand the whole geometry of the whole pitch and the system as a whole. Ajax, and later on the Dutch national team, became an art form of football, with Cruyff at their heart. The result? With the national team, he scored 33 goals in 48 matches, and the Oranje never lost a match in which Cruyff scored. The Netherlands paraded into the 1974 World Cup final, losing to the hosts of the tournament, Germany. Cruyff was picked as the MVP of the tournament. Despite lifting no trophies, the Clockwork Orange wowed the world of football in the 70s, laying the groundwork for the future of the game, possession football and tiki-taka. With Ajax, there was silverware aplenty. Six Dutch league titles in eight years, four Dutch Cups, and three European Cups in a row, from 1970 to 1973 with the cherry on top being the European Super Cup and the Intercontinental Cup in 1972. 
Ajax became the best team in Holland, Europe, then the world. Johan Cruyff received all the individual awards, including three Ballon d'Ors. From the moment Cruyff realized what he was capable of, he became more than a player. His long hair was unusual for the time. Cruyff was a professional footballer who saw his widowed mother not making enough to support his family. Cruyff saw the differences and inequalities in football and sought to repair them, even threatening to drop out of the Dutch squad ahead of the 1971 World Cup on a squad bonus dispute. So where does the best player in the world, an artist of the game who would speak with his feet and his mouth, go after winning everything at home? Where does the player who's more than a player go to? To the place where he was needed the most. In 1971, his teacher, Rhinus Michaels, moved to Barcelona. Michaels realized that Barcelona players did not lack technical ability, but were easily weakened by criticism. They lacked the winning mentality to become a football force. Michaels wanted Cruyff, and Cruyff had fallen out with the Ajax board, but there was still a problem. The Amsterdam team wanted to sell him to Real Madrid, a problem easily fixed with another quote from Cruyff. I will never play for a team that represents Franco. This was a decisive statement, one that sealed the Barcelona deal and showed Catalans what this guy was all about. When you get older, you see a lot of things more in football, I mean just football. And I think the best time, by routine, by everything else, is about 26, 27. So you reckon you're now about at your peak? I hope so, yeah. Cruyff changed FC Barcelona, scoring 16 goals in 26 matches, winning 5 0 at the Santiago Bernabeu, and clinching the league title for the Kool Aids for the first time in 14 years. Yes, 14. Cruyff accepted his role as a Catalan and pro independent symbol, a visible face in the direct opposition to the powers that be. As a player, he won a further Copa del Rey with Barcelona and decided to retire in 1978. But like many other greats of the game, retiring wasn't something he was good at. Cruyff made a comeback in the USA, playing for the old NASL after a series of poor investments almost drove him bankrupt. Though he wasn't a fan of the artificial pitches, his time there and a brief spell at Spain's Levante made him realize he wasn't done with football yet, and there was only one place he could go back to. Ajax. His impact was instantaneous and, once more, club and player were ruling over the Netherlands. His final chapter, however, was with their bitter rivals. After winning the Dutch Cup, the Ajax board thought Cruyff wasn't worthy of a new contract. This angered Johan so much, he went across the street, knocking on the door of Feyenoord. Playing with a very young Ruud Hulet by his side, Cruyff played every match but one, was the star of the team, and won the domestic double, ending his career as the best player in the country. When we talk about Cruyff's legacy, we have to make an impossible separation between the footballer and the manager. Here, in old school, we talk about footballers. But Cruyff's influence on the game is still present today. His ideals on the pitch led to some of the best teams, nurtured the best footballers who in turn became some of the greatest coaches in history. Tiki Taka, Total Football, the Ajax School, Barcelona's Masia, Pep Guardiola, everyone and everything under the wing of Johan Cruyff, the immortal god of football. But we have to focus on the baller. Cruyff was an artist on the pitch. What others do with a guitar or a paintbrush in their hands, he would do with a ball at his feet. He was arguably the smartest footballer in history. If not the best footballer ever, he was the most unique. And Cruyff's influence on the game is unrivaled.